on that point, how do you balance keeping those strong relationships with brands, mm-hmm. but also doing critical reviews? Mm-hmm. And has that ever been a weird subject or has that ever gotten you guys in trouble or have you had it blow up on you at times? Not, it doesn't blow up a ton. And cause I know pink bite gets a lot of criticism for that where they basically will like yesterday there was a review on a wheel set and mm-hmm. they basically said, Oh, there's this one issue and they kind of glossed over it. And then in the comments, it just was like, boom, boom, boom. And a mm. few people commented and said, I feel like pink bike now will basically do the review and they'll mention something, but kind of like soften it mm-hmm. and then hope that the comments will actually drill the point of what mm. needs to change. That's and interesting. so they kind of, some of the people in the comments feel like they're relying on the comments to actually pick out the critical points mm. and then elaborate on them. But I know it's really tough because, you know, when you have some of those brands pay you know, $100,000 a year mm-hmm. to support the site. And yep. then how do you write a review and be like, they really missed the mark on this one or for sure. And a lot of that stuff happens kind of behind closed doors. It seems like where if there is a big issue, they might talk about it and pull the review, mm-hmm. which is maybe not a negative thing, but how do you balance that? We've never been paid for a review. Like, Hey, vital, we'll work with you as long as you just review our bike. Like there's always some kind of other element in there. So it's never like, Hey, We'll give you 10 grand to review our bike. If that happened, I would feel like, how can I give this bike a bad review if it's not good or product or whatever? And so thankfully we're not in that boat. And the the sales and ad side of things, that's a relationship that, you know, Todd takes care of, Kyler takes care of. Like we'll talk once in a while, but we have a bit of distance between there. And if we're going to review a product and it's crappy and we say it's awesome, why is anyone going to want to trust us again? And so thankfully, with guys like Brandon, he established credibility, guys like Johan, and with our reviewers. And so there's the one time I I remember a brand not being psyched was they did a test session like 2012 or 2013, maybe 2014, and there was a Jameis in it, and they gave it two stars. James was super bummed and I think I think they pulled ads I don't remember but we don't get into that too much because one everything's pretty darn good and if something stinks like they're gonna call it out I wish we had the leverage that pink bike does to just kind of like open the floodgates and let the comments go but as you know like we don't have a ton of comments on the site mm-hmm. so we've got to call it out if it needs to be called out and also too there's time involved with reviews and not every product gets a full year on it to see everything kind of explode or detonate or what a problem might be. So where that some, is a huge problem because yeah, some yeah. writer might have a lot more experience on the product than what a reviewer can get. And that's kind of just the nature of what it is, you know, like what we have to do. And so we do our best to make sure it gets smashed up pretty good and see anything that can, you know, be pulled out if necessary. Yeah. It's hard. Cause I mean, theoretically to do a really just honest dialed perfect review you would need to have the product for at least a year but then at that point the new bike's coming out for sure so yeah keeping up with it is yeah super tough but thankfully now it seems like everything is so freaking good <laughs> yeah <laughs> that, it's either a four or five star pretty much always kind of yeah and the components are so consistent and strong unless there's like some real outlier technology or component that the the critiques are generally going to be about like sizing or noise or like, you know, minor issues like that. It's, you know, and if something is terrible, we're going to call it out. It's hard to find something that's not that good these days, you know? Mm -hmm. Is there kind of going back to that point of the product cycle, Mm -hmm. is there something in the industry that you would like to see change in regards to, you know, something like the product cycle or how things are released or embargo dates, or is there something that would be cool to see the industry move away from or move towards in your eyes? I don't know. It's a good question. I think the pandemic kind of shuffled stuff around to the point of where it used to be there are plenty of bikes to be tested to get them early. And then the pandemic hit and like, yeah, we don't have anything to test. We've sold everything. But I think that's about to change to some degree. It sounds like there's um, some excess in inventory and things will be available again. But it's a different time now where kind of the magazine model that trickled in until, say, 2019 was okay niner knows they have a bike coming out in october so they get all the media guys together to go ride it in august and then you have an embargo and everyone launches together you have a media camp that stuff went away with COVID, obviously and i'm not a huge fan of that that formula because one you're with the brand 
of course the bike is going to be sick because you're with their product guys, you're with the engineers, you're with the techs to make sure everything's running perfectly. And I think it's fair to say you could kind of get swept up in like, this was a sick vacation and we rode awesome trails. Like, why wouldn't this bike be sweet? And so I was glad to see that go away with COVID. It's starting to come back a little bit. And what we're, you know, what Vital does as best possible is to get the bikes in house and let us test it without someone from Niner looking over our shoulder or whatever. Mm -hmm. I think they're, they're pros in that situation too, though, because a rider like Brandon or now Jason, like they would have honest discussions with product managers and say like the stem is terrible. Why would you put a 70 mil stem on this? Or this feature is lame. Like they would have those discussions. Yeah. I see know. that a lot with suspension design where, you know, the, some of the bike brands, if they have a demographic that's usually more like fitness oriented, then they'll go with a more linear leverage curve, mm -hmm. which basically makes the shock use its travel more freely. And so people can hit smaller bumps and use more of the travel and have a more comfortable ride. But then if you put like a pro rider on that, they're just bottoming out all the time. And sure. so then you kind of could have that conversation and be like, Hey, the spec is not good. And then they always come back with, well, you're not the target demographic. Yeah. You're like, well, you're right. But you know, and I don't envy bike brand suspension brands at all for that reason. Like everyone is so different the way I ride, the way you ride, like my legs are short, your legs might be long. Like the, the stuff they have to deal with to make a bike good for everyone. I, I don't see how that's possible <laughs> to some degree, you know? Yeah. I think that's part of the whole thought process behind like the electronic suspension. Mm -hmm. I think there is a portion of that that's definitely being catered towards performance and, you know, Hey, we're going to set it up for this track. And when you hit this GPS point, your shock will lock or unlock or that, that, that is already happening in some capacity. Uh -huh. But I think a lot of it in the future is like, get on this bike, ride it for 10 minutes and it's going to auto adjust and let the air pressures out and, you know, you could even potentially have like a electronic expanding volume spacer that is like, oh, you know, you're bottoming out too much. Let's have this, you know, so that's, yeah. I mean, that's what happens in car suspension mm -hmm. a lot yeah. is, you know, the different ride modes and you could essentially say, I want sport mode today and I weigh this much and it's. Yeah. I, does, does that excite you? I, mm, 